Dieu vivant. Et la Bible dit que ton nom soit sanctifié. Même quand tu tombes, il peut te relever. RCV, un clic et suivez partout. Father God of glory, there is no better than you. Since eternity, you are the same, the unique. You are mighty. You love us. That is why we give you this offering of applause. Because you are God. In the name of Jesus, speak to us. For we are here to hear in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you to you for your day. I believe that the Lord will continue to use you for you to continually be being a blessing. Thank you for the entire worship team. And thank you to you who has come today. I will go straight into the words. I would like you to take your notebook. We are today in a second teaching on the developed theme at the school of David. The first Sunday, God allowed us to speak of the quality and the characteristics of David. The word declares that God found a man according to his heart. It is important for us to understand what was David's heart, how he served, and what must I do in order to be the David of today. We saw two qualities. We saw the qualities and the weaknesses. We saw that we get with David's qualities. Those were opened. The glory of God was manifested upon his life. And each time even Jesus, when they called him son of David, he was touched. And he could stop in order to intervene because he had heard the name of David. And I believe that you, I pray that you will be the race of David today. We also saw the weaknesses of David. And I told you that God forgives sins. But the consequences of sins are made tarry. That is what we see in Israel today. It is the smallest mistake of Abraham that today is resting at peace. But the consequences of his sins is affecting until today. That is why I told you sins present a lot of things to you. But the consequences of sin destroys if you love your children, if you love your descendants, I beg you to stay away from the sin of life, of the life of sins, because God can forgive you, but the consequences may remain. Give me an amen. Today, we're going to go into a second chapter, and I've titled it, At the Service of the Master. We're going to see how David served. I would like you to follow me carefully because I can tell you that there are many people who come to church 
but do not understand that the God who saved you, he saved you in order for you to serve him. Not only coming into church and folding your arms, being present every Sunday, it is not enough for you to say to yourself, I am a servant of God. That is what we're going to see and I would like you before leaving this place to take the decision to be a servant of God. I'm going to give verses that show the importance of being a servant. Firstly, secondly, I would explain how to serve how David served then I divided this in two how he served man and how he also served God I would explain briefly the benefits of serving and finally I'll give you the best characteristics of a good servant are you ready? Can we read out loud? Let us go into the first verse. We are in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. I'm going to give four verses, then we'll go into details. Are we ready to read? Are you ready? Okay, go. Let us go together. It's not a race. Read it slowly because it, it's a proclamation. Do not forget the commas and, and the full stops. Le sentiment qui était en Jésus Christ, lequel, existant en forme de Dieu, n'a point regardé comme une proie à arracher d'être égal avec Dieu, mais s'est dépouillé lui-même prenant une forme de en devenant élevé et lui a donné le nom qui est au-dessus de tout nom afin qu'au nom dans le ciel, sur la terre, et Seigneur, à la gloire de Dieu le Père. En fait, vous devez comprendre. In fact, you need to understand the Bible. God is preparing us in order to show us the importance of a servant. And Paul is speaking of the Christians. He's explaining to them the mystery of the greatness of Christ. He says, he who was God. The book of John chapter 1 tells us, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. God took the body and he came up on earth and he lived with people but he did not know he did not compare himself whilst he was God because he put himself down I would like please stabilize the microphones in order to put himself in the range of God the Bible says he brought himself down in order to become a servant. And because he brought himself down as a servant, because God loves the servant, the Bible says God also, say with me also, also means because of this, God in his turn had lifted him up because he brought himself to the service of God. God brought him up above all names that could be named upon the earth. And the Bible says before him, every knee bowed down and every tongue confesses 
that Jesus is God at the right hand of the Father. And this man who is lifted has chosen to live in your life, to live in your heart. I would like to announce to your life that nothing can resist you because the liberator, let me speak to people on this side, because the one who saves lives, it is in your life. Because it is in your life, every knee will bow before you. And you also, tell your neighbor, I also, tell him, I also, I will be lifted by God. When you are a servant, my friend, even if man do not want you to, there is a mighty hand of God that will take you from where you are and he will lift you up. In the book of Psalms 89, verse 20, God declares, he says, I found David, the servant. God, when he found a servant, when he found somebody with heart, the Bible says, God says, I found David, my servant. I have anointed him of my holy oil, the servant of God, the one who decides to serve God. Even if man do not oil you, there is a God. I'm saying that there is a God. I'm saying that there is a God who is able to anoint you, not of oil made by man, a special anointing coming in from heaven. That is why nobody can stop you. You do not depend upon the man's own anointing. There is a God who knows you because you are his servant. In the book of Isaiah 52, verse 13, listen to how God, through the prophets, he announces what he does to the servant, not only to Christ, but to you also. He says, look, 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 my servant will prosper. I lift my hand and I declare, because you are a servant of God, prosper in every domain, prosper in every field. He says, my servant will prosper. But he doesn't stop there. He says, my servant, let me speak to you here. My servant will go up. I'm introducing you in the class of those who will go up and go up. Not only he will go up, but he will rise. He will rise how? He will rise so high. Lift up your hands and say, I declare. Say, I declare. Because I am a servant of the mighty God. Prosperity, elevation. It is my portion in the name of Jesus. Take the fourth passage. I am showing somebody the importance of serving God. Everybody can hate you, but serving God, you must seek it. The children of Israel was coming out of Egypt, and this is God speaking to them. He says, Moses, tell my people, I brought you out of Egypt in order to serve me. I open up a bracket. Every child of God in this church who has taken time to serve the world. But you don't have time to serve God. You need to doubt about your salvation. Every time that God saves, he can give you a career. He can give you marriage. He can give you knowledge. But he could never stop you from serving him. When everything that you do stops you from serving him, somewhere, it is no God. Because God will bless you and you will be blessed through serving him. Listen to how he tells them. He says, you, there's a V missing. It is, you will serve me. I am not stopping you from serving your company. 
And I'm not stopping you from serving your groups. But beyond that, you must serve me. Listen. Your boss does not keep your breath of life. But you serve him. Those people who live in Gombe or Matonge or in any area. Your groups. It is nothing wrong with it. You are in there. But in everything that you do, do not forget to serve God. He says, if you serve me, listen to what I will do. One, I will bless you. Lift up your hands and say, I declare, curse is falling now. You must understand that even in the time of the Bible, God used a man. And he, this man spoke as I'm speaking. As soon as you believe in the word, the so say of the Lord would affect your life. And I declare, because you serve God, may the curse fall. I declare you blessed. He said, I would remove away from you sickness. Even if sickness comes, but you, you will show to sickness that this type of body, when you are sick, remind sickness. Tell sickness, look at this body. It is a body of testimony. When I was five years old, I was sick. At seven years old, I go sick. At 14 years old, malaria hit me. And um, sinus, and malaria, three crosses. But they came and they left. You also, sickness of today, the way you have entered my body, the way you have entered my body, you will leave. It is by stripes. There are certain sicknesses, uh, medication for every sickness. I'm presenting you the, the stripes of Jesus. The medication that is able to heal every di disease. Only the stripes of Jesus. It is a living God, my friend. When you serve him, he will bless your life. He says, I will destroy barrenness in your life, in everything that you sow, in everything that you do. I'm associating to, my, to your faith and I declare that you begin to rip, become a fertile land. May barrenness be broken in the name of Jesus. All of these are promises that the Lord does to those who serve him. The word of God declares it is the blessings of the Lord that makes rich. God will not give you money but his blessing is like a coat and because of its anointing in everything that you would do God will give you ideas and determination to do so. That is why the Bible declares it is the Lord who produces in us the will to do and the doing. Let me encourage somebody. If there is an idea in your heart, if there's an idea that God has put in your heart, I encourage you, go for it. The Lord will bless it. May the Lord bless the works of your hands. He says, because you serve me, I will send terror. Your enemies will be astonished. Even the enemies that you know and those whom you don't know in their camp, they will know that you, you are the untouchable of God. I repeat, may the Lord send terror before you. Lift up your hand and say, I declare to all my enemies in a general camp, I declare, you say, in all your general camps, may it be in the waters, in the cemeteries, in the air, in the forest. I lift up your my hand and I declare, receive the fire, receive the fire in the name of Jesus.
puissant. You are mighty. Parce que tu sers Dieu. Because you serve God. Amen. Amen. Écoutez, la vie. Listen. La vie même de Joseph. The life of Joseph. Et de David. And David. Nous montre que c'est lui qui a été sélectionné par Dieu. Show us that the one who's been selected by God, toi, like you. Tu deviens une bénédiction. You become a blessing. À ton peuple. To your people. À ta famille. To your family. Toute personne qui est choisie par Dieu. Every person, person chosen by God. Une bénédiction pour ta femme. You are a blessing for your wife. Mari, for your husband, for your community, for your church, for your country. If this is for you, receive it. You must before going back to heaven. I wonder how Christians of today, they are folding their arms and they are waiting for the heavens. If God wanted you to remain in heaven, he would not have sent you on earth. If he sent you on earth, it's because he wanted to tell you before coming back here and in accomplish the mission that I gave you, your gift and your talents for you to bless your community. So every person who is selected by God, they become a blessing. And God will use your gifts and your talents so that those who know you to be blessed by you. Look at your neighbor. You say, neighbor, you don't say when we ask you to. You are very stubborn. I say, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do not rush to go back to heaven if you have not yet accomplished your mission on earth. Tell them again, neighbor, you are called to affect your community. Look at them and say, neighbor. Shake your head and say, neighbor. Now you tell them in your language. Tell them you are very important. Mother, in your language, you repeated you are very important. You need to say it in your mother tongue. Tell, look at your neighbor. Tell them in your mother tongue. Say, neighbor, you are very important. What have you said? This is the God that we serve, isn't it? So you know what? When you are selected by God, everywhere you go, my friends, you will be a blessing. Look at David and Joseph. Or look at the life of Joseph in the house of Potiphar. Even in prison, he was a blessing. In the house of the king, he was a blessing. He became, as I wrote, a hand of God that was bringing in the fingerprint of the supernatural. When God chooses you, you become the representative of the fingerprint of the hand of God in your family, in your church. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I am preparing you to show that you are very important in the house of God. Let me go into part A. I showed you the importance of serving in the thought of God. Let's see what we did. Part A. He put himself in the service of man. Let me explain. Friends, God cannot just bless you for you alone. And you cannot serve a God that you do not know, that you do not see without knowing the God that the man that God gave you. I would like, like to go quickly in order to get to point A. 
He put himself into people's service towards his father. David, very young as he was, his father sends him to go and look after the ships of the family. And he himself testifies. He says, Father, a lion came, a bear came, but in order to keep the goodness of my father, I killed the lion, I killed the bear. The bear. This means what? A child who is a blessing of God will protect the good of his father. I repeat, you who still have parents, please look after them, spoil them. You will regret one day when they're no longer there. I tell you that there are many children with money and they regret with this money, I wish I could have, but you don't longer have the time. That is why give yourself the best when they are still alive. I've seen people on the wedding day. Father is no longer there. Mother is no longer there. And they enter into a glorious day and they cry because they say to themselves, my mom or my mother should have been here to see what I have become today. When God gives you time, work for the goodness of your parents. In bracket, you've always heard me say, the goodness of parents, you never destroy it. Children who are wise never sell the goods of their parents. They keep it and they develop it so that the world would know that I had a father who had passed by. It is your responsibility to work for the good of your father. And here we're speaking of the physical father or spiritual father. If you're in the church of God, you must say to yourself, this is the church of my spiritual father. I must give the best, the best of myself. You could say that this church, through me, let the lions or the bear come. I will stand and I will cast them out in the name of Jesus. One of the signs of a person with David's heart is to work with excellency with things that belong to others. And when you do it with a good heart, I've given some examples. Anna Anna understood the heart of God. God was looking for an authorized mouth in order to speak. And in my Bible, the Bible says that God did not speak a lot because God only speaks through the man that he has established. Anna knew that God needed a man. Anna was barren, confirmed to barren, but she makes a deal with God. She says, God, if you give me a child, I know that I'm barren. I do not deserve it. But if you give me a child from his young age, I'll give it to you. And she worked for the vision of God. Listen, a good wife must work for the success of her husband. But don't do like I've always told you. You mother at home, you have become so... Oh, you have different political parties at home. It doesn't help. Listen, if your husband fails, you also fail. You are the same team. Everyone must work for the success of the other. That is why a man who respects himself and when he buys something, he will tell his entire family, we have bought something. He will not say, I bought something. Because the family would take out the wife. Let me say, give me an amen. So Joseph, Joseph worked hard, but it was Pharaoh's vision. 
That is why God lifted him up. Elisha, the same thing. The Bible says he was in the service of Elijah. He was carrying water and he was carrying his bag. Do you know even at church, when a sister is single and she wants to serve God, it's the same people in the church who will kill her. And they say, we, well, we don't understand. We see her going up and down. We don't get it. The other day, I saw them at 8 p.m. So, what, what, what's wrong if you see them at 8 p.m.? You just want to see them around 8 a.m., 9 a.m.? At 8 p.m., they will say. There are some times that you were tired. You are uh, tired, discouraged. When the world condemns the lovers of the church or of God, do we talk about what they do? Can you see how the non-believers support musicians that would take them to hell? I was with my barber and I saw a musician coming. He's here from Congo. So they put the music. I was around. So if you compare the music that we used to listen to at the time when we were yet Christians and of today, this is just full of names. So himself, he was naming people and there was another, a second voice that does not sing and he's just naming Joseph of London, the man with a lot of hair, Papa Jean from Bobet. He dresses well. And then the man turned and I said, who is this? And then he said, oh, oh, this is a pastor. Oh, he said, oh, respect, pastor. He said, for you, us to sing your name in an entire song, you need to pay a certain amount in your song. For the star musician. So the song is not yours, but he sings you in the song. This is also a price. So for the second man, the second voice, so he named at least 30 different names to name your name there's also a price and then that song of yours if you want them to sing it in a concert there's also a price and people do it and you at church where they are singing you from God. God, look at my brother. Bless his life. Let them do their things. Let us do ours. Can somebody applaud for the glory of God? When you put yourself in someone else's service, God will bless you. The Lord will bless you because you are using his gifts to bless others. Before man, David worked for the king. Listen, the king, you know this story. The king was looking to kill him. But David did not say, because he wants to kill me, I'm also going to revenge. A little advice. When you are of God, you're not only just going to work with managers that are good. Hello? You can work with wicked managers. But your behavior will prove to them that you are different. Even in church, you can have good leaders or complicated leaders. Do not worry. Work. Allow your spirituality, your behavior to teach them. Listen to this advice. If you are of God and you have been chosen by God, there is no enemy. There is no group. 
personne. And there is nobody that can do you wrong. If you believe it, let it happen to you. You need to understand that if you are a servant of God, the person who will fight for you is God. The Bible says it is in peace. It is in trust that your strength dwells. One day he found Saul asleep. He did not kill him. Listen, brother. And when you have somebody who's doing you wrong, sleeping, and you have all the information possible, do not revenge. Listen. Even if you know their lives, do not take advantage in order to do wrong. God will see that you had the ability, but you did not do it because of God. I was telling two sisters, I mean, she's so used to insulting the other, and the other sister came to tell me, Father, she said, the way she's insulting me, I could do it. The way you are insulting, I can also do it. The what you do to me, I can do it too. But the one who brought me, the one who blessed me, has told me to not bring myself down to your level. Amen. Amen. Try your best for the world to see that you belong to God. Give me an amen. Not only he served before the king, you know all of these verses, he also served before the people. One day David returns. Look at what's happening in Palestinian today. In 1 Samuel verse 30, this, is hap this happened often. The enemies of Israel came and they burnt down the village and they took hostage like they've done. You see, Israel has fought a lot. They took them hostage. And David comes and he found the, the land destroyed. The house are burnt. And the enemies have gone with hostages. And they cried. After the cries, David consulted the Lord. He says, must I attack them? Listen and advise. In everything that you would do, in your difficult moments, never do things through emotions. Always consult the Lord. Emotions will push you to take negative decisions. Is that okay? Do you know that some insult reacts after? You don't believe, but yes. There's certain people where you insult them and they just leave you. And two days later, they hear the insult before they sleep and they're like in their heart, wow, this is what they said. Even in marriage, father asks you for something. And because you are in the world of saying no, so I gave this example in the morning. Your husband always returns around 4 p.m. And that day, at work, they obliged him until 8 p.m. You, because you think so wrong, and you're like, why until now he's not here? Where has he gone, this husband? And then you take your gun, ready to shoot. When he returns today, he will see. Man, the man is so tired. And he returns with a lot of stress. He knows that every time he returns home, this woman receives him with a smile. Whilst on that day, mother gets angry and the father returns with his sadness. And he realizes that mother's face is so angry. And he's like, how? I've returned. And then she's angry. 
And then he picks up his gun also. So he's not going to ask for food. He says, I return like this. So she's looking at me this way. And the mother says, he returns at four. And today he's returning at eight. Why? So father, in this ang- anger, he doesn't want to eat. And mother also takes up her gun. And because he doesn't want to eat, so he ate elsewhere. What's going on? And the father says, because she has not presented food to me, so she does not care about me. I will sleep angry with his gun. And the mother says, he did not eat, so he went to sleep early. So he's done all his happy stuff. And because I'm going to go to sleep, I'm going to sleep on the north side of the bed. And on the, then in the middle of the bed, there's nobody. And in the morning, everybody's waiting with their gun blazing. Like you become like Amos, like an Israel. And you would ask a good question the next morning. And then you just said, Father, what are we going to eat today? And the mother shoots the bullet. That is why friends in life never react according to your emotions. You will regret later. Is that okay? Serve God good. Even at church, when they were given an announcement, like we will announce that next Sunday we will receive guest speakers. We will receive our brother from Gael, the musical team. And we're going to receive the pastor coming in from Holland. We're going to give our offerings. And when you hear the offerings, you'll be like, well, you know some people, they don't really understand things. What well, did we ask them to invite the speakers? If he's going to invite the speakers, well, let them invite them. Does he realize the, the, the hardship we're going through at the moment? If you have such thought, I'm, rev- I'm removing it slowly. Is that okay, my friends? He went and he brought back victories. I would like to go quickly in the point B to the service of the Lord. I'm sparing you from all details. We will have enemies of our faith. Listen to how David speaks in Psalms chapter 1. Happy is the man who does not walk according to the advice of the wicked. Christians, we are put aside. Do not spend time in the midst of the enemy of faith. When you look at today on Facebook and YouTube, you see people pretending to be Christians. Their responsibilities. It is only to attack Christians. I had a TV program. I believe on Friday or Saturday. I cannot remember. And then the brother tells me the revival church has killed the world. In Congo, there's prayer in the morning, in the afternoon. Friends. I mean, it's no problem of revival churches. Protestants do it. Bima, all of those churches do it. They do it. Why? Because these people have nothing to do. They have nowhere to go. And most churches have seen the worry of these people. The day there will be work, people will go to work certain people go there because they say to themselves let me go for God to comfort me there is a young brother who is a graduate I told him can I give you something so that you can begin a business a business he says you know father even to begin that business he said the, 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 the dollars rate goes up and down it is so uncertain. 
So never condemn a good Christian. Never condemn. But only just advise people. That is why if you are a Christian, please, mother, do not share with us the people who are there to criticize the body of Christ. A preaching that we're having now, you don't share it. But if you see people arguing, you share it with us so that we can do what with it. I told you that on YouTube and Facebook, there are people that are making money from it in the right way. Do not allow yourself that you want to lead your life. Do not allow yourself to hear, to to hear stupidness that will burden your thoughts. There is a God who wants to protect us. Is that okay? He says, I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where would my rescue come from? In all your battles, your rescue will come from the Lord. He says, the Lord is my light. It is my salvation. Who shall I be afraid of? Do not be afraid. There is a living God. He says again, I love this verse. He says, those who put their trust in the Lord, they are like the mountain of Zion. They never worry. They are so stable. Lift up your hands. I am stable. I am strengthened. The mountain is covering Jerusalem. Also, the Lord is covering his people. Listen to this last verse. The Bible says those who trust in the Lord, they renew their strength. I pray for your strength to be renewed. They go up high like eagles. I, st- I tell you to stop playing with small birds. Let them make loads of noise. The race of eagles are not afraid of trials. I will go up and I will go up. Let me go quickly. What was David doing before the strange God, the foreign gods, and before the race, the race of Goliath? It is the responsibility of every Christian against every occult power to destroy the general area. And if there is a Goliath that is rising, you will fight it. Now lift up your hand. Say, I declare in the name of Jesus, every general area satanic I lift up my hand I declare may it be in the waters may it be in the in the forest in the cemeteries in the occult homes I lift up my hand I declare fire fire in the name of Jesus you must know that we have power against the devil. From time to time, the Lord will allow you to see the Goliath of your life. I can give you the good news. They will come to you in one way, but they will fly out in several ways. Receive it in the name of Jesus. There would always be fights. But every children of God that are broken through, they had gone through battles. Never be afraid of battles. A God is a God of all armies. Amen. Amen.